It's great to get to speak with you. I just watched the film last night. I have a lot of thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, starting off, what was your inspiration for this story? And I know you were born in Macedonia, but what drew you to this period of time and uh, the folklore around it? Um, oh, I kind of just wanted to do something that transports you to another time and place, um, and especially uh, to capture this way of life that existed for thousands of years, not just in what is now Macedonia, but just like across that region. And it's very connected to, you know, agrarian lives all across the world. Um, and 19th century Macedonia was just my closest entry point. Um, I had to do the least amount of research. <laughs> that sounds lazy. Um, I mean, just do a lot of research. Um, and then in terms of, um, I, I just looked into the rituals and traditions um, of that, area that time and place and and also they're not very abstract to me I, I grew up with all of my um grandparents were grew up in villages and still went back quite a lot that was a lot of my weekends grudgingly when I was growing up so the, the kind of lives of um, capturing a kind of um you know I I got glimpses of it growing up and I wanted to sort of document that before it disappears entirely um and yeah that's kind of where it came from yeah. So what did you do? <clears throat> How did you go about creating the sort of like magical lore, I guess, is the word for it when it comes to how the witches exist in the world? Because it's very interesting in the movie how she sort of like shapeshifts into other beings. How did you go about that idea? Uh, mainly my principle was to just try and keep it as simple as, as possible. I kind of was using the, the being a witch aspect purely as an entry point into this kind of you know reality that we're working the story exists within but then after that it's uh, to me they're just people um everybody the people who are witches in the film and the people who aren't um they're humans uh with feelings and thoughts and you know needs and wants and i just went from there and in terms of um uh the rules of uh that the, that shape-shifting aspect it sort it just comes from um, not just um, Eastern European tradition, but uh, everywhere in the world, when women were accused of witchcraft, they were told accused of having taken the shape of another person or another or an animal. And I thought, well, okay, what an amazing uh, perspective on life if you can can do that. So that was kind of the only um, uh, surreal aspect uh, or unreal aspect that kind of took on and then I absorbed it within the story. So, you know, in terms of how you become one and so on, I, I built a system around it uh, so the story could stand on something. But beyond that, uh, once we had it, it was literally just keeping it about as simple as possible and sort of, um, you know, it, it, it's about the, the, the eyes of the witches, not the claws, uh, this film. So wherever the eyes took me is where I went with the story. And speaking on the sort of eyes, I also think uh, the main character, Nevena, has a really unique way of speaking. It's sort of lyrical. Can you talk about how you figured out how you wanted her to communicate? Mm. Um, yeah, so part, I, I was obsessed even, um, there's an element of this story I, I came up with when I was um, in first year university for a short story for an assignment. Um, uh, and I was briefly obsessed with uh, so-called wild children, kids who were found um, at age 17, having been raised completely uh, removed from humanity. Um, and I, what I found out is that if you're found before the age of 13, the part of your brain that uh, is responsible for language still can, uh, it's still not fully formed. So you can learn language. And mm -hmm. if you're found after 13, then you don't, uh, you're never capable of actually learning language. So I, I just w went based on that premise um, and I felt like what, what, uh, she would be, uh, uh, that, that was instinctively, it wasn't like an intellectual process. I, I read from instinct. Um, mm -hmm. and so instinctively I felt like what, what would her voice sound like? And just sentences were coming to me. What is now part of the voiceover, um, in kind of broken Macedonian, broken archaic Macedonian, I should say. Um, the film is in a specific dialect from the 19th century that's also again connected to uh, how my grandparents spoke. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I, I was very finicky about which words she would know, which words she wouldn't know, um, how they would be shaped, and also 
how much she could absorb of language around her as well if she hasn't you know ex been part of a community and belonged um and then how how that would shape her consciousness and then it's also that thing of like you know uh, 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 if you're traumatized as a child it leaves imprints on you so I, uh, that's you know I, I didn't want her to sort of magically learn how to speak once she's suddenly around people but also didn't want her to not be communicative at all once you learn how to feel and connect with others that that, that does obviously affect uh how you can communicate and interact so mm -hmm. again I'm, I'm kind of intellectualizing something that was genuinely like a very instinctive process and it's even mm -hmm. things like you know i remember like shot listing for the next day and looking at a section that's quite late in the film um around the time when she's talking anyway i, I, I won't uh use spoilers but um yeah, I, I, I was in Serbia. My husband was like in Australia and we were, you know, just communicating via Zoom for about four months. And I remember like, I just sent him a screenshot of the script, which he'd read years ago. And he just saw, and I didn't say anything. And he just saw the voiceover. He's like, oh my God, you're talking about me. Like, you know, so it comes from, so, uh, which to me, I'm like, I never write autobiographically. I don't really care about seeing myself on screen. I'm interested in other people more, but, you know, it's a, it's a very instinctive process. And then, Anytime I'm talking about it, I'm trying to kind of figure it out cerebrally, but even I don't know if I'm right <laughs> when I say these things. It's purely instinct. But I feel like that's very much like the way you work. It feels like everything mm. is out of you. You are all these women. You are the character. And like, you know, finding a way to belong, finding your voice. It was very much you were the connecting tissue and the and the, and you created a world for us. And I feel like you every day you released just the kind of the things we didn't know, you kind of let them come out. So it was, we were all kind of searching and you kind of opened those doors that you kind of opened in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I thought it was a connection. I think all you guys also then built on that. Uh, it was an exchange of energy. Uh, uh, you know, the character is written is like half a shell compared to what became when she became all of you guys. And, you know, obviously a lot of me is in her. I, I felt like I'm... I do feel like I'm also present in the film um, in, in that sense, but I feel like we all are um, in that in that way. And yeah. Yeah, I'm actually curious, Numi, um, what drew you to working on this project? Because you are an actor in the project, but you're also an executive producer. Can you talk about what what caught your eye when you saw this? Um, it's very rare that you get to be a part of something that is truly a collaborative ensemble piece that and, and and the fact that we're all kind of carrying the same soul and the same heartbeat just mm -hmm. made it so unlike everything I've seen before and it's like non-speaking part for most of us and it's we really had to go into a place where you're just like you're very primal it's almost like being a newborn and doing things for the very first time like how do you walk when you've never walked before how do you you know how do you connect with creatures around you do you do you lick? Do you t do you touch? Do you listen? Like it was just like an awakening, and you had to like. I felt like I had to peel off lots of layers of what I thought was, you know, a, a behavior and pattern, and just go back to like not knowing anything. And I feel like the way um, Goran picked and chose like brought all these different faces together to become one, it just felt like so unique and so brave and playful at the same time. Um, and uh, it's it's one of the most extraordinary and different projects I've ever been in. Yeah, and I think I, I wa really wanna ask you guys about working with Sarah Klimoska who plays uh, Nevena for I think like a good chunk of the film and how it was both working with her and for you, Numi, how it was sort of imitating her style of acting for that character. I mean, it didn't feel like it was, I, that's why I kind of went with Goran was like the carrier. Like he felt like he was the connecting tissue because we were not mimicking or like not copying each other. You kind of said, you, you it felt like you kind of gave us clues. You gave us, um, you planted small seeds and all the actors and then you kind of guided us to become the same sort of, but it's, that was also, it just came so natural. And, you know, when I watched the film, I was just so blown away by her performance. It's like, you know, I cried and I was holding my breath and it, and I forgot that it was like, 
you know, kind of after a while, you just forget forget that it's different actors. You know, this just become mm-hmm. one sort of, um, and that's something you did, Goran. I don't really know what you did. You hypnotized us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also, but also, they, they, every actor brought something else to the character, and then every shot it completely out of order. Um, and a lot of the actors didn't even get to meet each other, which was um, sad on a social level. Like creatively, it was fine, but um, no, it was. Um, I think yeah, there's an energy that connects them. And then whoever brought something, it, it wasn't that they were imitating each other. Like literally, the film is in a, is about we often mistake becoming human as beh- behaviors and. Uh, ticks on the surface but it's really about what's inside um it's not becoming human on the outside it's becoming human on the inside and it it was sort of instinctively again the same approach with the actors you describe what's going on the feelings the understandings of of the world um i sort of uh i spoke again about uh, the wild child phenomenon and how that 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 shaped other people in the past and uh used examples of that um, and then in terms of whatever actor, if, if they kind of picked up a, a you know, behavioral pattern, I would tell the others who were coming up later on about it. Uh, they were always all informed about the full you know, map of, of the character's internal world. But um, no, there wasn't, there was definitely never any talk of like, oh, she does this like this, so you do this like this. Um, and also obviously the character gr- never grows through every iteration. And it's important if, if it becomes just the same thing um, it's not a very interesting film. <laughs> you know, watching five people try and behave like each other, I don't think it was going to be something I wanted. I wanted to see. So it was kind of very important to me that they all brought their own thing, and then obviously it was up to the rest of us to sort of acclimatize everyone, so it just becomes one single clean through line in terms of the character's emotional well, through line. Yeah, I definitely think that you could see her slow development from just being you know, in that very closed off environment to joining this community of people. And I wanted to talk to you about the way in which you approach how Nevena has this community of women around her and that she finds in comfort in. Can you talk about exploring that and, you know, the different female role models in her life? Um, so in what specific way you talk about it? Um... Um, well, how did you what was the method in which that you were exploring it? Like from her mother, her, you know, biological mother to uh, Anna Maria's character to the community of women that she's in with the village. Can you talk about how you thought about developing that and how you wanted to go about that with her character development? Yeah, uh, again, instinctive process. I I kind of grew up very much surrounded by women and in terms of my most intense emotional relationships with, within my life from a young age. And, and I, I could understand female pa- patterns of behavior a lot earlier and easier than I could male ones. Um, so that's probably reflected in the film. And then also once the premise was kind of crystallized and her personality was crystallized, then I was just like, okay, well, this is the world she lives in. How, you know, what, what would come at her first, like in terms of how she interacts? With everyone around her, what would be the first influences, and and how how would uh, they expand in what stages, and how does that affect her, and in what stages? Um, so you know, it was natural in those kinds of uh, patriarchal societies, which no longer exist. Luckily, we've moved on so much as a world. No, um, so you know, in a patriarchal society, it's obviously natural that um, the, her first, the first main people she be exposed to would be women. And that would be her first entry point into humanity. Um, and, you know, that's what shapes it. And also, I, I'm usually much more interested in that because in terms of um, what I found in growing up, like the world of feelings to me existed uh, around women and, and trying to understand human behavior. Um, you know, when, when, a, when a group of women talk about uh, feelings, it's gossip. When a group of men talk about feelings, it's art. Like, I always thought that was a bit bullshit because I always mm-hmm. felt, um, <laughs> you know, these conversations to me were like what most, like, you know, instinctively excited me, but also th- this is what helped me understand things. Um, and yeah, I think that's reflected through what, what she goes through. And, that, and I, I think the story guides me through the, pl- the things that I find most, you know, uh, that are most emotionally connected to, and those were the parts uh, th- that I felt like I wanted to, th- those were the parts of the story I wanted to live in you know, and learn from. It was, it's truly felt like you see the world kind of through f- female eyes. It was like the, when we mm. did this 
and you know she's like you know a, a woman is supposed to cry like when a man comes in and how you're supposed to behave around men and you're supposed to you know um do not look at them but still like this all this like you know the behavior mm -hmm. that so many women and girls we just do you know and then when you pointed it out and it became when i saw the film and the full like the full scale of this it was like oh, it was really um brutal in a way to see we're all like taught this way and you kind of in the simplicity of this story kind of made it really pop and how we all kind of sort of brainwashed to behave a certain way from a very early age as mm -hmm. girls you know and and it just became so so clear to me that you go around probably see it from a very you're probably closer to most women than women are <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it sort of does come from, like, when I was, you know, meant to be a boy growing up, like, the, the things that I connected to were not what boys were supposed to connect to. And, you know, I, I knew how to hide that very well in terms of um, yeah. this does not represent me and how do I connect with people around me. But, like, yeah, I, I, uh, I used to play with dolls because that's what was interesting to me because, you know, dolls, at least you could create a human being that had feelings. Guns were not interesting to me. But, like... I would have to do that in private or so, so on and so forth. So it's just a sense of, um, I, I think the fact that I was so removed from my gender growing up just pointed out how constructed it all is. And I think if you do grow up a, a, away from human influences, the constructions become that much more glaring. Um, the things that are strange to her that are very commonplace to us, if you really stop to think about it, they are very strange. <laughs> you know, they're really, really strange. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I, I really like the way that was done. And it seemed so obvious to her once she, to us, once we see her sort of react to it and feel like this is weird and this is not what my instinct would tell me to do. I really like that aspect of the film. So yeah, I really want to thank you two for speaking with me. And um, I hope people get to see this film. It really was an eye opener. And it was, I liked the balance of the horror and the more mundane slice of life moments. And it. it was really, it was really great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you.